You right, Mark? All right, come on in. On March the 12th last year, this lodge was one of the six lodges that picketed out the rest of the South Wales coalfield. And we we were one of only four lodges left in, in the British coalfield without anybody going into work and scabbing. We are, we are very proud in this lodge of that fact. But this morning now has, um, has dawned on us and um, we find that we are standing outside the gates now ready to go, to go into work. And, um, well, one of uh, great emotion, I should say, but uh, one of pride, especially to be standing in front of uh, Penelkaiba Lodge Banner, especially to be chairman of such a wonderful set of lads in Penelkaiba. We've got the distinction, if it's a distinction of all in scot free right throughout this strike. And of course, today we go back, and no doubt about it, it's a setback as far as we're concerned, but we go back in the knowledge that there's no agreement being forced on us. And of course, I don't think any of us, any rank and file member up and down the country, would have wanted the Scargill or the national executive then to go on their knees and grovel for a settlement then off the national coal board. Put it on, If we win the strike, We'll gain all our objectives as far as I'm concerned. And our main objectives are to get investment in the pit and recruit. But we've got to try pit. and fight to keep this community going. And, you know, until, well, the last breath in our body, then we'll I'll can. fight tooth and nail with every one of us, with every miner and miner's wife, to keep if the NUM. the mining industry goes from these valleys, there is nothing left. And the miners of South Wales realise this. That's why the strike is more solid in South Wales than anywhere else. Because uh, the fight, or the battle, is about communities and about people's lives. Nothing else in South Wales. I know more people in Penrith now than I've known all the years I lived here. I, I've seen them, you know them by sight, but you never really knew them as people, but you do now. I think Mrs. Thatcher thought she would split us apart. <laughs> but my God, she underestimated the women. Because instead of that, we just banded together. A lot of these people that are saying that the pits are being run down have never even been down the mine, have they? So they don't really know. We're a close family. And the valleys will help one another. And as long as we stay together, we've got a chance. We've got a chance. I've joined this dispute in Fortinet to save my own community and to save my own valley. I've never wanted to live anywhere else. But then I'd like to see people being able to, to work here. To me, the colliery in Henry Kaiba, when that wheel is turning, it's the heart of this valley. And when it stops, the valley stops.
film in the game. Pardon? <laughs> I'm not sure they film in the game. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. You alright? Ah. Gasping. 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 Yeah. Gasping. 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 We were down on that tip down by there, where they de what they're doing now. They, we done it in 1921, then we done it in 1926. Now it's good old days, 84, and they're bloody doing it now. We were good boys doing the war. We had flags flying on top of there, look. You get out of bed in the back bedroom in Pentoin, and you'd see a flag up there. People going to it and everything. What happened? That's all I've had in my life is balls and strikes. No matter whether you're a teacher or, or whatever your job is, if, if, if you don't stick together, you've got nothing, nothing. Because this, this type of government would take, they're da doing their damnedest, this is what they're doing now, trying to take the, the uh, unions away from the working class because that's the only way the poor buggers get a chance to fight is to keep the unions together that's what have helped them through all the years but people don't see that you know they strike in they strike in but people never strike unless there's a real good reason but when you get striking men not for a bloody rise but for the want of work but to want to work strike in because they want Hundreds to work. Hundreds of pickets have been out at collieries in South Wales this morning as miners have again gone into work. Martin Shankerman reports. Nearly a thousand have been out this morning throughout the South Wales coalfield, but there's been little trouble. Can you tell me why you think it's important to be up here today, Idris? We all want jobs to go back to die. And that this man is doing what we don't want people to do in South Wales, is go back to work. I mean, uh, as far as we can turn the man to scab. And the only way we're going to keep our jobs in South Wales is for everybody to stay solid. And to pick it like this and get these men out of work. And do you think this is important for the cause of Fenwick Hyper Pit? Or oh, vital. Vital for Fenwick Hyper Pit. A lot of our stuff goes at this, to this plant and is keeping work for the rest of the people in the valley. You couldn't have much more of a crisis in a small mining community, a village in South Wales, a mining village in 1984. We got to look around the streets to see the condition of the houses and the roads, the schools and the hospitals. And that in itself is an object lesson in um, politics because people seem to take it for granted. Thatcher thinking seem to take it for granted that there are certain standards that are everywhere. Standards of living, but they're not. I mean, the only thing that we've got going for us in the mining areas is a community. And if the pit is taken away before we are good and ready for it to be taken away, we'll never change and improve the living condition in this particular uh, valley. We are only working class people and we don't ask much of life. Surely that woman was put in power to give us a chance to give something back to this country. Well, that's all we're asking for is work. It's not a lot to ask for, for work. We're all cogs in a wheel. And if we don't work together, we don't get anywhere. People have shut down shops in Penrokaiba now since the strike. What then, if all these pits shut, that means there'll be never any work here. So what price are the rest of the shops that are just hanging on by their teeth? I mean, if you wanted to sell your house, you can't. I mean, there's people up living by me that have had their house up for sale for two years or more, and they've had about one person inquiring. Because no one wants to come to a dead valley. And they're all afraid, you know, of what will happen now if, if the calories do close. I think every man that was here this morning felt exactly the same. They had a lump in his stomach going in through these gates. 
So as far as the coal board and the government saying it, uh, they'll offer the greatest redundancy payments in the history of British industry. Money is no good to us. We want a livelihood. We want to earn our own livelihood. And we want to look after our families and bring up our families the way we've been brought up ourselves, with dignity. And we want to go to work every morning. You know it's down that pit there and it's a stinking horrible place to work. We want to go there with dignity. It's like we're a community above ground and they're a community of their own below ground. You know, they're... Um, oh, I don't know, I think there's something special. You can be a clever person, but a lot of men have gone underground and one ride in a carriage is enough for them. And to, to work in that thick dirty smoke, they say, oh, they modernise now. I don't believe for one minute, maybe one or two of them, but not a hell of a lot of them are not modernised. No. It's got to be said, I think, that Welsh coal is the finest coal in the British coal field. There's, there's no other area in the British coal field that can match the quality of Welsh coal. And yet, it's the Welsh coal field that they want to decimate. They want to get rid of 22 pits in the next five years, and these 22 pits are producing the finest coal in the British coal field. And when we go and ask for reasons for it, we, we are just given the economic rubbish. Economic rubbish. Figures that are just juggled about by accountants up in Obad House that don't know a piece of coal from the back of their hand. <laughs> Well, it's, it's, it's excellent coal. There's, there's no other word for it. What they burn on the, on the grates now, the Welsh coal I'm talking about, have always been, they're supposed to be the best household coal yeah. in the world, supposed to be. So why do they want to take it away then, is there? You know, why? Prior to the strike, we've had lorries coming in from all over the country, taking it as fast as we can mine it. We don't seem to have any trouble in getting rid of the coal from the pilot. We've got the furnace aid market, which is right on our doorstep. Any domestic uh, market we can satisfy. And of course, uh, the markets are unlimited in Penelkaiva. Anything we produce in Penelkaiva, we can sell. If the coal would uh, add a greater sense in their head, they'd invest in that colliery and pursue that coal, because it can be a money winner. Now, they've had investigations into Pendlekaiba Colliery, why it cannot produce coal. And those investigations have been carried out by independent members of the coal board and independent members of the union. And on both occasions, the workmen of Pendlekaiba Colliery have been exonerated. The problems have been clearly related to bad management and bad planning. If we had good management and good planning and investment in Pendlekaiba, it's got the reserves and the product to make it viable and a future for the people in the community. I've done a lot of work on the surface over all the times. And um, looking at the material, especially the, the conveyors on top of the pit and the short carriers only got to go small distances. Same as the bunkers and everything, they're all... Well, Jack, they're from your time, Jack. Most of the conveyor work on top of the pit, bunkers, is from your time. Well, they're still using them in our time, innit? And for the future, we've got to use them, because they're not, they're not going to spend money there. You know, some days now, you start off, start the morning off, the coal will be coming back great. So, you know, have a nice day today. I'd like to see the coal come back. Mm. Lovely, great. All of a sudden, Bang. What's the trouble? Oh, the wash rear broke down. Oh, the creepers are broke. And I said, you'd have that every time. And that's where the NCB should have been putting money into the pit to go counteract that, isn't it? But they never did. I was on top of the pit one day and there was a dip. NCB top officials was coming around the pit inspecting machinery. And what the hell he said, you've got 1982, 83, uh, Underground machinery, he said. But on top, he said, it's 1926 bloody machinery. What do you expect? Of course, I wasn't supposed to overhear this, but I did hear it. Yeah. 
we get machinery in our colony that's 15, 20 years old. It's been dipped in a bit of white undercoat paint and it's made to look new. You know, conveyor belt systems, um, coal cutting machines, motors, gearboxes, things like that, you know? It's all hand me downs. It's just been dipped in a bit of undercoat to make it look nice. So you think, well, it's a new machine, it'll be all right. But within a couple of months, our machine is, is running to the ground. It's no good. We've actually got a wash box in the surface which where the coal is washed. It is a, a box, a very large box, that's flooded with water and the coal travels through it to be washed. Now, our actual wash box, there is none of the original wash box left. It's all, it's just a, it's like a patchwork quilt then of patches where it's been repaired time and time again. And there's actually none of the original wash box left. And the NCB argued, argue with us that we must get into a profitable situation before they'll give us the investment. Well, it's, it's like pulling the cart before the horse. We try our best, we, God knows how the people on the surface keep the place going. It's a miracle they keep it going, for any length of time at all. We've got the skill, we've got the ingenuity, we, we are probably the greatest improvisers in the world. If we was given the proper machinery, the proper equipment, our colliery would be the finest colliery around here. We got the coal, we got 30 years of reserves of coal in our colliery. It's just they won't spend the money. That's what everyone's bought them to. walking the roads, they're screaming for jobs. You hear boys say, uh, people saying that who likes to work on the ground, but a job is a job, isn't it? I'd rather be on the ground and walk on the roads, and you've got youngsters in Penrith Cape over here, that's all they do all day, they either sat in a cafe or they play and snuck around the end of the workman's hall, nothing else to do. I think the last time we had recruitment in Penrith Cape was six years ago. Two boys we took in six years, no recruitment at all. We want men on development, we've still got men in Penrith Cape on development, we're nearing time, we're still carrying Carrying rings, steel arches, 12, 14 foot rings, you know, at their age. They say, well, we, say, well, we are fighting, we want to get them to the surface and, re and uh, get youngsters in their places. The new production manager has made three visits, I think, to the pit since he's taken over the job. And each visit he's been here, he's been perfectly satisfied with the two production faces we got. Can't find any fault at all with them, in his own words. The one face is an excellent face and the other face is a very good face. They're the best faces we've had in this pit for 10 years. We've got a few rumours, it's all about the pit being shut down. We've got a review meeting uh, tomorrow, I think, down in Lanishan in Cardiff. So we'll know by tomorrow afternoon, I think. I think we can have a bit of a pour down, but... Yeah, there's a couple coming up by your mouth. The pram. Get on to them, kid. I honestly believe that that pit can be made to pay. But I think that they want to do it to the coal industry like they've done to British Telecom. The, the idea of this government is to, is to close the small units and hive off the profitable parts and sell privately. That's the ultimate aim, if the truth is known. There's vast amounts of coal to be mined in South Wales, which have been left in the ground by the old private owners. Because it was too expensive and uh, too hard and for, for them to get at the reserves. But today, with today's technology, them reserves are becoming available. And we've got to make sure that uh, 
those reserves that we're talking about are mined by the National Coal Board. And not by some fat yank with a fat cigar and a fat wallet. They just want to abolish the unions completely. And, uh, well, I, when you talk about privatisation, I mean, that's what that will mean, Ted. It'll go back to the days of the old Powell Deffering pits when miners have got no rights at all and no one to back them. And who wants to go back to that? Do you want to put us all in a corner? Now, you do as you're told and you'll stay in the corner. And we'll go back to Victorian days where we used to do as we were told. I know of old men that have said that they had to put their hands up, you know, like children in school, begging for a day's work in a Kyber colony years and years ago when, when they, um, they were owned by, uh, what were they called? The Corey brothers. They were owned, it was owned by the Corey brothers, German boys then. And they used to have to put their hands up, you know, oh, me, sir, me, sir, three bags bloody full, sir, that nonsense. And that's what she wants to bring us back to now. It's always been the same. I go to so many old people and, and they've all told me the old story when in the old days, when we this and we that, well, we don't want to go back to the old days, let's go forward. It's supposed to be a, a, such a scientific world we live in. They'll spend millions and millions on bloody nuclear arms to blow us to death, but they won't put money back into the country to make work for those that are unemployed. We're looking at it logical and sensible, right? Say 600 men working here. Yeah. And they're on the dole. Yeah. So what's it cost with 12 months for pay all them families on the dole, the government? Yeah. Plus, you get no resources in as you gather tax, you pay no tax, yeah, no stamps being paid. Yeah. So at the end of the year, where, is it an economical? It costs no more to close that pit and keep it open. They always said at Perry Kyber and Mardi, yeah. the most military the pits pit. in the coal field, you of the coal field. Yeah. And they've been trying for 17, 18 years to shut Perry Kyber. They know the coal is there. yesterday had no real answers to our case just a bombastic attitude and uh, they had already made the decision before we went down there yesterday uh, we made the point that there's no geological problems at all in the pit we've got two excellent faces in the pit which the coal board had already stated there's no safety problems in the pit there's adequate reserves in the pit, which the coal board now say can be worked from, from deep navigation. So there's no other argument to close in the pit, as far as the coal board is concerned, other than economic arguments, which we, which we have never accepted, which sparked off the strike in the first place. Every miner, every miner, it's what the country knows that if a pit is exhausted, that is the end. There can be no argument about it. If it becomes unsafe to work, it cannot be worked. We accept this fact, but when, when there's coal left in that pit, and coal that can be got and mined at reasonable cost, providing the coal board puts investment into it. But when they deliberately starve colonies, there is no way you can make it economical. And it's a deliberate attempt by the coal board to close these mines. First of all, you explored the myth that closing collieries make the rest of the coal field more economic because the facts are against it. We have closed 800 pits in the United Kingdom with an object of making the other 200 economic, and they are not economic. And in South Wales, we've come from 200 pits to 27 pits, and yet the coal board cannot run those 27 pits economically. So there's some other factor which causes the coal board to lose money other than an economic pits. 
for some reason, the accounting system of the National Code Board is such that you cannot look at any detailed accounts of any colliery, of any individual colliery, because there are no detailed accounts, detailed accounting system at individual collieries. They'll just come out with a figure at the end of the financial year. This colliery lost uh, one and a half million pounds. This colliery lost two and a half million pounds. When you, want, when you challenge the coal board on these figures and ask for to see detailed accounts of a particular colliery, they can't produce those accounts. I really can't understand why we are not hammered the coal board with facts and figures to illustrate that it isn't the closure of policies that's going to bring about viability. It's an in public inquiry into the accountancy methods of the National Coal Board. There's a shaft about a mile deep and on top of the shaft are three or four uh, NCB administrators with shovels, shoveling pound notes down the bottom of the shaft. Money poured down the drain, hundreds of thousands of pounds every week in South Wales. Uh, we had a, a tunnelling machine in Penel Kuiper called a Dosco. It uh, drives underground roadways. We used it for about two years, opening up new coal faces. Then we got into a position with this tunnelling machine where it, we hit a fault, a geological fault. We asked the manager at the time to strip the machine down and move it to another part of the colliery. The decision was that the machine was to be left there and it was left marooned in a heading underground for four years doing nothing at a rental charge of £500 a week. Few of us went all over the country speaking to public meetings, to other trade union organisations, to anybody that would listen to us. And we said all through the strike that if we was to lose the strike, this pit would go. And that's what's coming to pass now. The coal board have been determined to close this pit. We fought it off year after year, decade after decade. And now, well, I don't know what to think of this. You've, uh, We'll fight it all the way, that's all I can say anyway. It's obvious we're concerned about our own, but there must be other areas, uh, uh, say in Yorkshire or Scotland, different areas that are fighting just the same as we are doing here now. You know, where is all the money going? It's all being wasted somewhere. It's billions of countries not short of money. When we had the bloody Falklands, we were the, we were the richest bloody country in the world. She, she flitted the money like that. Uh, it makes me boil. What are they speaking Russian? Boy, you feel me. Boy, you feel me. What are the dead horses? This pit closes, and if the furnace plant closes, and if the unemployment figure will go up to over 50 per cent. What do you think will happen to the valley then? Pinnath in here. They can flood it. Mm. Make a reservoir, they've all run on about water. Block the river and let, let them have it. It's a, lot, a hell of a lot cheaper for the government and for the taxpayers of this country to keep Penrick Iver open as opposed to closing it. If Tribe of Pit went, that's it. That's how community dead. I mean, once that pit goes, you've got nothing. It's, it's the pulse of the village, then. It's the heart of the village. Everything evolves around the colliery, then. That's why there's a village here, because the colliery was put here. If the colliery wasn't here, there wouldn't be a village here anyway. We had the news about Penrick Iver shut in. Well, I thought, oh, well, let it go. What's the worth of fighting for when we know it's going to shut in any case? Then talking to Raymond, and he said, well, we still got to fight. We've got to put up a fight for it. We've got to try and keep it open. I mean, this pit, as they stated on television, it's still got 25 years' work there. 
So why should we let it go? So we just got to carry on fighting right to the bitter end and see if we can't keep jobs in this community. Because when once our pit goes, we've all had it. I mean, I got a young son, I got one on the door, I got one in the pit down here, I got to fight for them. If I don't fight for my husband, I got to fight for them. I mean, my husband's been there 33 years. I mean, to me, that's a lifetime. All right, if he wants to come out of it, let him come out of it, but he's still going to fight for his sons. You know, to have one on the door and one threatened now with no job at all, and he got two children. I mean, he's not on his own, there's thousands of them like him around you. What are they going to do? What do they want them to do? They want them to get up and go away somewhere else? I mean, that is killing the community to let them go away. So therefore, we've got to try and fight to keep this community going. And, you know, until, well, the last breath in our body, then we'll carry on fighting. The, this final decision will be made by the uh, general meeting uh, that will take place in the Penrick Hyber Hall on the 10th of August, um, a week after we've started back to work then, where we hope for a full membership of the colliery to attend the meeting and a final decision will be taken at that time. You had uh, Welsh communities springing up in Oxford, in Slough, in Swindon, all people are allowed to leave the valleys because there was no work for them. It's getting to a situation now. We've been industrial gypsies for far too long. It's about time the money was put there. The quarry is viable and it should be left there for the community to reap the benefits of it. I think we all got to fight to stand up and be counted, you know, in this meeting now which is coming up. So if anything, if anybody got anything to say and they got to say it. If they want to pit the shut, it's up to them if we want to keep it open. Personally, myself, I want to fight and keep the pit open because uh, I'm only a youngster and if I go to another pit where I'm not guaranteed a job and the job that we're going to have, uh, our money is guaranteed for three years and then you can drop our money. It's easy for me to say, leave the pit go today because I'm 52 years of age. I can go out to it. But i got a son working here, i got another son on the government scheme, so I want to keep the pit open. And of course I'll fight it all the way. Fairly volatile meeting. A lot of um, a lot of things were said in the meeting that needed to be said. Everyone that wanted to express their views have expressed their views, and the result of the meeting is that there's an overwhelming majority to fight the Penrith Hyper Pit. And I'm absolutely delighted. You can see quite clearly inside that the membership have, have been divided to a certain extent with the uh, financial inducements that the call board and the government have put in forward. But at the end of the day, the argument was quite clearly about jobs, quite clearly about saving the, the colony for this community and not to export jobs to other valleys. The vote went, let's fight for the pit. We fought for the 12 minutes for it and we're going to carry on fighting now right through the review procedure. Well, I, I think we should anyway. It was a good result from everybody that we fight for the colliery. Unless you've lived in a mining community, I don't think anybody can really understand. They've the come, they've raped, as private owners did before them. The National Coal Board have made millions of pounds of profit out of this valley and they want to disappear. Like the Arabs folding their tents and disappearing into and the they night. They say the Kaiba is one of the pits that they're going to take. They'll do all in their power to create divisions within the colliery, but they say it'll close itself. But you can see how devious the coal board were then. First week in May, we were ready there to uh, start producing on a double shift basis, of course. The coal board came in over our heads then and said that um, they wanted 57 uh, men over the age of 57 made redundant. Among those 57 were some key men, and as uh, blacksmiths, uh, riggers, um, roastmiths, well, as people of that calibre then, who you have to train people to replace them. And of course, uh, they were irreplaceable. The management then actively 
campaign in the pit then, along with knuckles then, to shut the pit then. No authority in the pit. The only discipline installed in the pit was installed by the union. If it wasn't for the union, there wouldn't have been a bucket of coal up the pit after all this all these, because they didn't want it. Miners of Penru Kaiba Colliery in the Cumin Valley have voted two to one to close the pit with a loss of over 500 jobs. Martin Shankelman reports. The Penru Kaiba men took just one hour to decide to shut the pit, defying their lodge committee who urged them to put it through the review procedure. The result of the vote in the workmen's hall was greeted by silence. The men filed out and most refused to speak. Those who did were highly critical of the two to one vote. Shut it, yeah. Absolutely shut it, kid. The decision of August the 10th, when we had a two to one majority to fight for the pit, has, has now been reversed in there tonight. And, uh, I know men are going to regret it. I know they're going to regret it. I know there's men that have voted in there to close the pit. Within two or three years, we'll be going up to the DHSS office and the Dole office, begging for money for their, for their kids' shoes for school and everything else. It's a tragic day for this community, for the members of Penrith Colony to be bought off by the government. Because that's, that's, that, that is, in effect, what happened in there today. Right? So far as the dole payments goes, of course, people that uh, have been on strike a year have paid no contributions, and um, they wouldn't be able to receive dole next year. But if we had gone through the review procedure, we could have taken anything up to nine months to go through it. So they wouldn't have lost that much. They wouldn't have lost 500 jobs down there. And that's what we've done now. Whichever way you look at it, 500 jobs have been taken out of this community. Thatcher and come into the Penicaiba and come and say stop and leave, for example, and meet the people of Penicaiba. But I think, I think there's a failure by us to get communicated to the people in authority the essence of what it is we've been fighting about and what the boys been fighting about for the last 12 months and what we've been struggling for the last 20 years to, to you know, bring into being. That's the community and the jobs. It's not a sort of uh, Luddite or ignorant approach, but an understanding that the communities were created by the pit. And until such time as there is provision for those communities to have some alternatives to dereliction, that there'll always be trouble. I wanted to go down that pit. I wanted to sit in that cage and stop alleging any bloody salvager. Why should they have to salvage? Why should they have to degrade themselves and salvage our pet? I mean, how do they think those men are feeling, shutting their own bloody pet? They, they, they are broken. They are. They, I know my husband's are broken about it. I mean, when he heard the decision on Monday night when they had the vote, he came home and he, he, he was literally in tears. And I thought, bloody hell, what the hell are they doing to him? What are they doing to him? I'd given it long and hard thought about the closure of Tyler Cut. And what made mind up was I could see we were after the strike, we were getting nowhere. I could see the shape of the colliery, nothing was coming in, no firm decisions would be made about the future like development or anything like that, or repairs, major repairs. And I could, I could see the writing on the wall. Uh, uh, your union then, in all fairness to my, to my lodge, they run here, there and everywhere, and they just could not get no satisfactory answers to give to the membership. Men, myself, we were disillusioned. We were, we were getting nowhere, and we could see the rundown. The final death blow came, when uh, the coal board announced that uh, unless we made a decision before, 12 weeks before the 31st of December, that we'd lose unemployment benefit for the current year. Well, that then was the final death blow, as I said. 
and we had a meeting and we took a vote on it. Bit of a fallacy going about and it was the older boys. What closed the pit eventually was the swaying of the younger men. As far as the management of the con colliery is concerned, they were actively campaigning within the colliery to close the colliery prior to the uh, to the review meeting, and they were taking very much an active role in as much as the under managers were going down the pit and spreading rumours amongst the men then, and it had a serious effect on their on their thinking then. It's not only this generation, or you can go back to more than likely. Uh when the pit was sunk in 1879, I think the first ton of coal came up the pit then. From then on then, every generation had to fight for the pit. Where the colliery manager in this particular pit at that time uh, held a meeting then, uh, vesting day, January the 1st, 1947, and uh, kept the men on top of the pit, something which was unique as far as they were concerned, because they had to be down the pit by 7 o'clock. And you had the colliery manager saying to them, uh, Coast lads, this is 1947, this is vesting day nationalisation. Uh, the pits are yours, lads, but don't forget, we are still the bosses. I've got no regrets of going on strike. I think, you know, if we hadn't gone on strike, we'd have gone the same way then. And we'd have gone on our knees then. We'd have gone out on our knees then, and at least we can say now then, uh, I can say to my children or my grandchildren, at least we fought for it. We didn't give it to them on a plate. Where's the sense in shutting down 25 years' work? Where's the sense of it? If you don't invest in a, in a pit, Obviously, uh, things have got to go eventually. You can't keep machinery running on, string on wire for an indefinite period. No one knows better than people working in a particular colliery whether that colliery justifies its existence. has been a thorn in their flesh for many years and they are quite pleased to see the end of it. Miners will go from this pit into other pits and we won't give up the ghost in other pits, we'll fight just as hard for other pits as we have fought McGregor, we have fought this government and we'll continue to fight in other colonies. Right, thank you, Guy.
You right, Clark? All right, come on, in. On March the 12th last year, this lodge was one of the six lodges that picketed out the rest of the South Wales coalfield. And we we were one of only four lodges left in, in the British coalfield without anybody going into work and scabbing. We are, we are very proud in this lodge of that fact. But this morning now has, um, has dawned on us and um, we find that we are standing outside the gates now ready to go, to go into work. And, um, 